Everyone thinks speed is all about pumping your arms, moving your legs as fast as possible. It's more about controlling the chaos that you want to let happen. If I, if, I'm, if I talk about the common mistakes, uh, a lot of athletes, when they, um, I worked with some football athletes too that were preparing for the NFL and some of the sprinters that we work with, when they first come into the program, the number one common thing is leaving the blocks too low. Pushing in that first step, being so low, and you see them landing, not to be able to push, landed to catch themselves from falling because they're so steep. Their whole body angle is very steep, way less than 45 degrees, where they're stumbling forward versus extending and posting up and pushing down and back. So teaching them not to be too low in the first step, not be lower than 45 degrees, it takes a lot of trust. The cue that they usually use, get your shoulders up, stick your shoulder up with a line of force at 45 degrees, that's number one. Number two, being broken at the waist. A lot of athletes, come in, a lot of new sprinters have been told, stay low, stay low. Their way of staying low is to make the break at the waist, lean forward with their torso, thinking that they're driving and they're not driving. They're basically bent at the waist and they're not in a position where they can apply force. A very good way to see if your athlete is fake leaning, basically bending at the waist or having a total body lean, which this is what we look for, is to look at their shin angle at the moment of ground contact. Let's say if their shin angle is 45 degrees or 50 degrees, you want to see their torso at the same moment at the same angle. They basically parallel with each other. But if the shin angle is 90 degrees perpendicular with the ground, but their torso is leaning forward, that means that they're not leaning forward. They're broken at the waist. They're trying to stay low to please their coach, and they're not in a position where they can apply force. Uh, a big deal um, once we have that good technical foundation is to make sure that you're always maintaining, we're always rehearsing the correct movement. We're never gonna stop, even the best of the best, even your same ball, had to progress and, and had to continue to rehearse how to leave the blocks, how to push. So if your same ball has to do that, and the best of the best in the US have to do that as sprinters, how about a developing sprinter? So we continue to rehearse the correct movement because it's easy to forget, just like any other skill. Uh, ask a pianist that stopped playing the piano for a couple, two days, a couple days and get back. They get trusty, although maybe they might be world-class pianists. Um, I actually read about that in um, technical development and motor learning. So it's very important to continue to rehearse the movement, but start adding more power to the movement, more strength in the weight room to, you know, to be more explosive and more powerful. Well, back when I was young, there was a huge myth that if you run on your toes, you'll be able to grab the ground better and you'll be able to be light on the ground and move faster. It wasn't until I grew older that you apply zero amount of force to the ground. When you do so, you end up messing up your ankle, you end up messing your, your knees and on for. Um, don't run on your toes. Use the mechanics of your body. Learn how to work with your body and not against it. I've also learned that developing power, you have to be low to the ground. Uh, the lower you are to the ground, the again, the more you work against your body, you end up breaking at the hips. You end up using half the amount of power as you would if you were in a proper, a proper formation. So running low to the ground, running on your toes, try to stay away from that. Learn how to run fast according to the body you've been given. Everyone thinks speed is all about pumping your arms, moving your legs as fast as possible. But yeah, we have to learn how to apply that force at a split second or apply this movement within a restricted amount of coordination. I can't lift my legs up as fast as, po as, fast as possible because then my, my foot would end up swinging out too much. So I have to learn how to control this limb while paying attention to the other limb at the bottom. So it's more about controlling the cha chaos that you want to let happen. Some of the worst advice I've ever gotten about sprinting is get low. Um, I think actually I hear a lot of kids even say that, you know, you're supposed to be low and 
it actually is counterintuitive to the proper position that you're supposed to have. Getting too low doesn't allow you to bring your knees up in the right position to apply force in the right direction. And, um, and so, yeah, don't, don't get too low because then you won't have a good hard post line as you're sprinting or at least in the drive phase of sprinting. Thank you.